I'm here to discuss about the frostum of a regular pyramid, its properties, and the formula of computing the lateral area. So, before that, let's recap a few terms from our previous lesson to refresh in our mind. First, the frostum, where when we say frostum, the portion of a cone or pyramid which remains after its upper part has been cut off by a plane parallel to its base, or which is intercepted between two such planes. It is from a Latin word in mid-17th century, which means piece cut off, as you can see in the illustration on the examples. And the second term is the regular pyramid. So when we talk about regular pyramid, a regular pyramid is a pyramid whose base is a regular polygon and whose lateral edges are all equal in length, as you can see in the illustration below. Now let's go to our main topic, which is the frostum of a regular pyramid. So when we talk about frostum of a regular pyramid, it is the portion of a regular pyramid included between the base and section parallel to the base. So let's go to the properties of frostums of a regular pyramid. So what is the properties of frostums of a regular pyramid? First is the slant height of frostum of a regular pyramid is the altitude of a face, which is that one. Second, the lateral edges of a frostum of a regular pyramid are equal. So all lateral edges, this one and this one, are all equal in length. Then the lateral faces of a frostum of a regular pyramid are congruent isosceles trapezoid. So when we say congruent, they are all equal in length, width, and areas. All equal in measurements. And the last properties of a frostum of a regular pyramid is the altitude of a frostum of a regular pyramid is equal to the length of the perpendicular line from the center of the upper base to the center of the lower base. So this line here and that line here, which is the altitude, I, has the same length. Let's go to the formula in computing the lateral area of frostums of a regular pyramid. The lateral area of frostums of a regular pyramid is one half the sum of the perimeter of the base multiplied by the slant height, which is written as this, where LA represents the lateral area and P1 represents the perimeter 1 of the base 1, P2 represents the perimeter 2 of the base 2, and L represents the slant height, as you can see in the illustration. Since you all know the properties of first terms of a regular pyramid and how to calculate its lateral area, we will now proceed with how to calculate its total surface area and its volume. So, what is the surface area of first terms of a regular pyramid? Surface area or the total surface area of first terms of a regular pyramid is the sum of the areas of the bases and the lateral area which means to be able for us to identify the surface area we have to use this formula which is the surface area is equals to base 1 plus base 2 plus the lateral area wherein base 1 is the area of the lower base and base 2 is the area of the upper base including the lateral area which we have solved earlier than the surface area now, how about the volume of first terms of a regular pyramid? What does it mean? So, volume of first terms of a regular pyramid is the total of one-third the product of the altitude and some of the areas of the bases and the mean proportional area between the bases, which means we can identify its volume by using this formula, which is volume is equals to one-third times base 1 plus base 2 plus the square root of base 1 and base 2 times the height wherein h is the height base 1 is the area of the lower base base 2 is the area of the upper base and square root of base 1 and base 2 is the mean proportional area between the bases since my group mates had already explained on how to find the lateral area 
total surface area and the volume of the first sum of any regular pyramid. Now, I will give an example on how to find the lateral surface area of the first sum of a regular square pyramid. Here is our problem. Find the lateral surface area of the first sum of a regular square pyramid whose altitude is 38 cm and whose base edges are 10 cm and 20 cm respectively. We had already learned that to find the lateral area of the first sum of any regular pyramid, we will use the formula LA is equal to P1 plus P2 all over 2 times L, where the P1 and P2 are the perimeters of the bases and the L is the slant height. The first thing that we need to do now is to find or identify the givens, which are altitude equals to 38 cm and the edges are 20 cm and 10 cm respectively. Then, let's find the perimeter of the bases. We will use the formula P is equal to 4S since the bases are in square. Let's continue. P1 is equal to 4S, 4 times 20 cm. P1 is equal to 80 cm. Then, let's find the perimeter of the other base. P2 is equal to 4S, 4 times 10 cm. P2 is equal to 40 cm. After finding the perimeters, we will find the slant height of the frustum. We will use the formula C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. In our problem, we will use L is equal to square root of A squared plus B squared, where A is equal to 38 centimeter and B is equal to 5 centimeter. This right triangle was obtained from this frustum which came from our problem. Then let's substitute. L is equal to square root of 38 squared plus 5 squared. L is equal to square root of 1,469. L is equal to 38.33 centimeter. After finding the slant height and the perimeters of the frustum, we can now proceed to find the lateral surface area of our frustum. Using the formula, LA is equal to P1 plus P2 all over 2 times L. Let's substitute the value of the variables. 80 cm plus 40 cm all over 2 times 38.33 cm. The lateral area is 2,299.8 cm squared. Example number 2, water tank. A water tank 10 feet high is in the form of a frustum of a square pyramid whose base edges are 12 feet and 10 feet respectively. In the depth of the water tank is 8 feet, what is the wetted area in the tank? Solution. Let W be the wetted area of the tank. The wetted area is the portion of lateral faces and the lower base of the tank covered by the water. And let LA be the lateral area of the wetted area and B the area of the lower base. Then, wetted area equals lateral area plus the lower base of it. The water tank, 12 feet wide, 10 feet base, 8 feet slant. First, solve the, to solve for lateral area, let us consider the vertical cross section below. The graph we made. And, by similar triangle, the formula is x equals 0 0.8 and solve for the slant height we have slant square root first we solve the inside the square root 0 0.8 squared plus 8 squared plus 2 square root of 64.64 feet and square root of 64.64 feet equals to 0 0.8.04 feet and substitute all the value in the formula for the lateral area, for the weighted area, we have lateral, the formula is P1 plus P2 over 2 slant. The first P1 equals to 10 feet plus P2 equals to 11.6 feet over, over 2 times for the Slant height 8.04 feet equals to 
347.33 feet squared. And solving for the area for the base we have, base equals to 10 feet squared, 10 feet squared equals to 100 feet squared. Now, we, now, we solve for the weighted area, first, weighted area equals to letter area plus the base, letter area is 347.33 feet feet plus 100 feet squared equals to 447.3 squared. Therefore, the weighted area is 447.3 feet squared. Good morning everyone. Our topic for today is all about the first term of a right circular cone. There are many objects around us that are shaped like a first term of a right circular cone. Take for example, thumb, shape, personal statue, pills and cups and glass and many more tools. And part of equipment such as bearing used in industry. Let us now consider a right circular cone pass a plane parallel to the base of the cone and the portion of the right circular cone include between the base of the cone and the section made by the plane with the cone is a called a prism of a right circular cone. We have a two properties of prism of a right circular cone. Number one, the slant height of the prism of a right circular cone is the same all throughout. Number two, the altitude of the first term of a right circular cone is equal to the length of the perpendicular lane between the two bases. Today's topic is all about the lateral area, the total surface area, and the volume of the frostum of a right circular cone. To get the lateral area, the total surface area, and the volume of the frostum of a right circular cone, we must know first the formulas. So I have here the formulas for frostum of a right circular cone. For the area of lower base or A sub 1, we have A sub 1 equal to pi r squared. And for the area of the upper base or A sub 2, we have A sub 2 equal to pi r squared. The lateral area of the frostum of a right circular cone is equal to one half the sum of the circumference of the bases multiplied by the slant height. And it will give us the formula of A sub L is equal to one half multiplied by C plus C multiplied by L. Let C and C the circumference of the lower and upper bases respectively. A more convenient formula is when we substitute the value of c into 2 pi r and the other c is equal to 2 pi r and it will give us this formula a sub l is equal to pi multiplied by r plus r multiplied by l or a sub l is equal to one half multiplied by 2 pi r sub 2 plus 2 pi r sub 1 multiplied by L. And using this formula, we can get the value of lateral area of the frostum of a right circular cone. Since in the previous lesson, you have already learned on how to calculate the lateral area of the frostums of a right circular cone, we will now proceed on how to calculate its surface area or the total surface area of the Prisms of a right circular cone, including its volume. So, what is surface area or the total surface area of the prisms of a right circular cone? Surface area or total surface area of the prisms of a right circular cone is the sum of the areas of the bases and the lateral area, which means to be able for us to identify the total surface area, we will use this formula, which is surface area is equal to base 1 plus base 2 plus the lateral area wherein base 1 is the area of the lower base and base 2 is the area of the upper base including the lateral area which we have solved earlier than the surface area. 
so we will now proceed to the volume of first tombs of the right circular cone so what is volume of first tombs of the right circular cone so it is the total of one third the product of the altitude and some of the areas of the bases and the mean proportional area between the bases so how can we identify it we can be able to identify the volume of first tombs of the right circular cone by using V is equals to one third times base 1 plus base 2 plus the square root of base 1 and base 2 times height, wherein H is the height, base 1 is the area of the lower base, base 2 is the area of the upper base, and square root of base 1 and base 2 is the mean proportional area between the bases. And now, I will give you an example on how to calculate the lateral area, the total surface area, and the volume of the first term of a right circular cone. So, given a first term of a right circular cone and has a height of 14 centimeters and 6 centimeters respectively, find the following, the lateral area, total surface area, and the volume. So, in order for us to find the lateral area, we need the circumference of the bases and the slant height. Note that the radius of the upper base is 3 cm and the radius of the lower base is 6 cm. So, the circumference of 1 is equal to 2 pi r and has an equivalent of 12 pi cm. Same as the C sub 2 which has a formula of 2 pi r, it has a 6 pi cm value. So, for the slant height, it can be solved using the right triangle BEC and this formula shows that the value of the slant height is 14.32 so we need to solve for the lateral area we have the lateral area is equals to c sub 1 plus c sub 2 over 2 times la slant height so substitute and then we have the answer of 404.89 centimeters squared so therefore the lateral area is 404.89 square centimeter to find the surface area, we need to find the area of the lower and upper base of the first room. So base sub 1, which has a formula of pi r squared, has a value of 36 pi centimeters squared by substituting the 6 centimeters squared to the radius. Next is base sub 2, which has the same formula of the base sub 1, has a value of 9 pi cm squared, substituting also the 3 cm to the radius. So, to solve for the surface area, we have the formula of surface area is equal to base sub 1 plus base sub 2 plus the lateral area. So, we have now 36 pi plus 9 pi plus the uh, value of the lateral area, which is 404.89. So, we now have a surface area of 500. 46.26 centimeter squared so therefore the total surface area is 546.26 square centimeter my group mate discussed to you earlier what is v1 and v2 and how to solve it v1 is equals to 36 pi and v2 is equals to 9 pi so Let's distribute this number to calculate the volume. V is equal to 1 third times 36 pi plus 9 pi plus square root of 36 pi and ni times 9 pi times 14. So, saan nakuha yung 14? So, yung 14 is nakuha siya kanina sa lateral area. Mm -hmm. So, it equals to 294 pi. So, the pi is equals to 3.142. So, 294 times 3.14 is equals to 923.63 centimeter cube. Therefore, the volume is... 923.63 cu point centimeter